Good afternoon, YouTubers, friends, followers, subscribers, my Trevorites, my lovers, my haters, at least the spacers. Well, people, thank you very much for continuing to support this channel. It means a lot. But as I always say, if you're watching this right now and you've not yet subscribed, why not? It's free. Okay, people, now I'm going to go straight into it. You've seen the thumbnail, and on the thumbnail, I've added a guy who I'm sure you're all aware of. His pen name is Chris Ryan, a.k.a. Colin Armstrong. Now, Colin Arms, Colin's name's on Wikipedia. It's all over different sites. I'm not get telling you something you don't, you know, it shouldn't already be able to be found out. But let's look at, let's call him Chris. So let's look at Chris's career, right? Chris um, joined the military in 1978. He was in the Special Air Service as a sergeant in B Squadron. Now, he became very, very famous from Bravo 20 and his own book, The One That Got Away. Right. Now, I've watched over the years, and it still happens today, where other members of the armed forces and other veterans will criticise something that you put out. What, they, what I need to make you aware of, there's not a single veteran or armed forces soldier, sailor, airman, marine, who's done the same thing as someone else. Every single person in a patrol has got a different perspective of what happens, and they carry out what they believe is due diligence, and they have their own mission and own objective. Every person in that patrol carries different equipment because they have different tasks. I cannot criticize what someone else is carrying. I don't know what they're, I don't know how they're feeling. I don't know what's going through their head. All I know is they have the same mindset where we're trying to achieve our objective, which means that's the only thing we have in common. His thoughts, his feelings, what he's doing, how he's going about it, right? He can only account for what that in his own head. You cannot judge what someone else is doing. It's impossible, yet people still do it. The reason why I'm saying that is because we all know that Bravo 20, famous call sign, was given a task during the Gulf War. They were to move forward and they were to find a lie-up point and carry out an OP, an observation point, and report back the findings, right, at the main supply route between Baghdad and northwestern Iraq. Their mission was to identify Scud launchers and hopefully destroy them send the coordinates back to HQ and move forward in order helping helping the, the alliance and to move forward and not have the threat of nuclear or these type of weapons fire towards friendly forces. That was their task. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, their OP was compromised and they had to do escape and evasion and break away. During that e and &E, escape and evasion, they came under sandstorms, minus degrees at night time where it was freezing and some of them had hypothermia. When the sandstorm hit in, right, Chris Ryan got separated. He decided that he was going to head to Syria. 300 kilometers, 190 miles tab. He still holds the world record for any SAS trooper on escape and evasion. While he, was, while he was making his way through there, he had many contacts with enemy forces. He suffered liver damage. His body weight dropped by 36 pounds, which is 16 kilograms. He lost all his toenails. And he was, he drunk, he drunk water which was contaminated, which helped destroy his liver. But he did it. Now, the weird thing about this is years later, even today, people have went and tried to walk his footsteps. I'm going to follow in the footsteps of Chris Ryan to see if he's telling the truth. We have that today where people try and go, it didn't happen. Well, I'm going to explain something. When you are under threat, when you have enemy forces around you and you could be killed, when you have the pressure and the stress on top of you, and the determination and the mindset to succeed and the adrenaline rush that goes through you, you will achieve so much under that amount of stress, adrenaline and mindset than you can ever, ever do during peacetime. Example, 2008, I'm involved in a air assault operation in the enemy territory. Three Chinooks involved, we're all in the air and we're flying towards the target. As we're flying towards the target, we find out it's a hot LZ. In other words, there's enemy forces there and there's a lot of gunfire happening. We can see the red and green tracers shooting through the air. 
we get word. We're standing up in the back of our Chinook and we get word. Chinook number two is taking the casualty. Chinook number two is taking the casualty. Oh my God, it's in the air, it's taking the casualty already. So we're hovering around in three Chinooks trying to find the right time to, to land. One of the Chinooks, which left before us, starts running out of fuel and decides to go back to base to refuel. So that's now heading back to base to refuel. There's a casualty in the other one and my Chinook needs to land. We land on the ground. This is the whole point. As we land on the ground, we carry out the drills which we have rehearsed religiously for the previous couple of days. The quad with Dean Kurgan on the back drives off with a trailer on it filled with ammunition. It's meant to drive off about 20 or 30 metres and go firm. The rest of the troops peel off the back of the Chinook and go an all round defence ready to move off towards the target area. But what happens is, as the quad drives off, the ground isn't sturdy and the quad sinks a bit. So because of, because of the amount of weight of the ammunition, it sinks a bit. We run off and we're moved into different positions. We are, we are in a different order of march than we have rehearsed and we start to move off. Now, this is why I'm trying to explain. You cannot go and retrace those footsteps. It's impossible. There is enemy fire coming and hitting the chopper. The rear gunner on the Chinook um, is engaging. The side gunner is engaging, right? And there's guys under fire. As we move forward, I'll not mention his name, we take a casualty and one of our one of our men is killed on the spot. You can't rehearse for that. You can't carry those footsteps again. So we bring the guy back into cover. He's got a backpack filled with ammunition, loads of weight. Now I can tell you now that if I tried to lift his backpack on top of my backpack today or any other day, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would not be able to do it. It's too heavy. However, under stress, enemy fire, threat, fear, fear as well as the feel, the fear of not, not, not wanting to fail and succeed. There's someone there that needs to go back. This, I was able to put his backpack on top of my backpack, get up and keep going. The adrenaline. Now, now I'm not saying I'm Superman, but at the end of that operation, I collapsed. I collapsed with dehydration at the end of that operation. That operation lasted 14 hours. I can never do that again. So what I'm trying to say is when people criticize you for doing a certain thing, you have to remember that they have to be in that moment. They have to understand the threat, the fear, failure, success. You've got lives. You need to do this. You need to, loads of things happen. Adrenaline rush lifts you. Give, adrenaline can give you the strength of two or three men to achieve your objective. So whenever people go back now and try and walk the route that Chris Ryan did and they criticize it, You've got to remember, they're not under threat. They're not under fear. There's no enemy there. They're not being shot at. They know they're not going to be killed. There's all these different things to take into consideration to make someone succeed. Chris Ryan ended up being awarded the military medal for that operation that he did. And to this day, he's still an advisor to different security companies and he does a lot of books now. Yes, he's not an author. So just wanted to point that out. Many, many veterans write books about their experiences and about what they have been through. Many critics will come in and say, that's impossible. And that's only because they would never ever live up to your expectations and they are not built the same as you. They don't have your mindset. They don't have your strength, your agility. And there's no way they would be able to carry out the operations that you carried out. It says more about your critics and what they have achieved in their career than it says about you. Anyway, listen, thanks very much for watching the video. I do appreciate it. Uh, stay safe.